All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, we hello. <laughs> we're back on four two eight Shibuya Scramble. Um, once again, if you uh, if you missed the last couple streams, um, we're going to be doing this until after Christmas. Uh, Lemur is unfortunately a little bit indisposed. Her mom just had knee surgery. Luckily, everything went well. Um, she just had it this morning, so uh, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. Yay! Um, unfortunately, she's going to be helping out more around the house, which means that, uh, you know, we are back. We're going to be doing this solo for a little bit. So we're going to be playing 428 Shibuya Scramble, and we'll go back to Phoenix Wright uh, when she comes back. I love how we started the first half of the first day of investigation. That was probably not my brightest idea. Um. <laughs> hey, Whoops. You're, you're valid. I'm valid. It's okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and recap what happened last time. Um, let's see. So first we did Kano. Uh, and that went very, 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 very badly. Because first we uh, killed a man. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, not as Kano. Because we decided that our love life was way much more, I guess, important than, you know, a kidnapping. Yeah. Sure. Uh, cool. So basically, apparently our girlfriend... Okay is not magical, mystical, like she actually exists. Uh, Kano's been trying to get in touch with her father to ask for her hand in marriage. Uh, and now, of course, he's come to Shibuya and he wants to talk to him. Uh, so, don't choose to go to him immediately. You you kill a man and, you know, then you drink some burning hammer and die. Um, <laughs> That's uh, what I do. Yeah, uh, that's what we did the first time. Uh, so then uh, we went back and fixed it and uh, decided that, you know what, we're not... Because uh, Kano, if Kano decides that he's going to go try to talk to Daddy, um, he's going to intercept Minori Kawa, who is rushing to try to make sure that his friend doesn't hang himself. Because this is a nice, happy game. Um, <laughs> so we went back and fixed that. So now Minori Kawa... We'll hopefully get there in time. We'll find out. Um, then we drank that burning hammer and almost died. Found out why we shouldn't have done that when we did Ta <laughs> Tama's route. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, we went yep. back to Tama's route and changed who we gave the burning hammer demo to. Because originally we'd given it to Sasayama, who then gives it to Kano. We found out that you don't want to drink that shit on an empty mm. stomach, because that is horrifying um but oh yeah apparently you like die or something yeah but, um no. <laughs> so we changed that um and changed kano's fate there so now we can proceed with kano uh but then we ended up um changing going through as tama and finding out that minori kawa is going to drink it on an empty stomach flip out and destroy the sales demo that we need to be at so that we can buy this necklace um so like a champ yeah uh so obviously at some point we need to stop Minori Kawa from drinking it or we need him to eat something before he drinks it not sure what yet we'll find out we also did Achi's route um who let's see he's we ran so darling I love him so much he's my baby um <laughs> So, uh, first we had a gun pointed at us, because remember we were running from that gunman back in the 10 o'clock block. Um, we got away from him. Then we uh, decided that we were going to help Hitomi out, um, because she needs to go back to Dolgenzaka. Um, so we decided, hey, we're going to go help her look for the blue van. Got to talk with the big gossip lady who decided he told me was our girlfriend, and that was awkward for everyone involved. Um, and we found the van. Uh, we also found, saw uh, SOS, who is uh, Achi's former gang, um, who is now being led by Susumu, and apparently they're not on good terms. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. we are stuck in a keep out from that one, uh, which means we'll need to do a jump later, um, but we will find it later. Um, so, right now we can do Kano, we can do Minorikawa, or we can do Osawa. Um, so, who do you want to go with? Let's do... Uh, I, I'm kind of... Well, last time 
Osawa like was having issues, so let's try to calm Daddy down. All right. Yep. Uh, so if you remember correctly, last time with Osaba, um, he found out that both of his daughters were kidnapped. Hopefully, we've managed to subvert what happened in Achi's route so that Hitomi didn't get kidnapped. In theory, we have fixed this. Um, also, hope, Mana is I'm taking... Cross my fingers. Wait, I'm Osawa? That's right. I'm Osawa. Yeah, you you're Osawa Nordikawa. and I take me Nordikawa. All right. Uh, yeah, if you missed the, the stream before this, uh, or I guess two before this, uh, Mana had some issues reading the stream, so I ended up taking it over. Um, so she'll be taking, or sorry, they'll be taking Minorikawa, and I will be keeping with Osawa. Uh, all right, so Osawa called up Tanaka over the intercom. Yeah. There's something I want to show you. Could you come in here? He needed a second opinion, and Tanaka could be relied upon. Osawa opened the door the moment Tanaka knocked. He looked around before ushering his vice director inside. What's this about, sir? This. Osawa showed him one of the images. Tanaka's face went pale. That's a big ouchie, sir. <laughs> <laughs> It can't be. <laughs> Tanaka clearly recognized the symptoms of the WA virus. Any idea what this is about? Osawa asked. Uh, no, sir. But it looks really creepy. <laughs> These images were just emailed to me. The subject line says one year ago, South Africa. Oh, <laughs> so lax. So been experimenting. Okay, that would put it around the same time as the most recent run of infections, wouldn't it, sir? I mean, <laughs> um, but that information isn't... Tanaka trailed off, Osawa nodded. The thing I don't understand is why these pictures were sent to me. Osawa opened the other email from A. The second message I got says that these pictures are my crimes. Mm, I'll look into it on my answer, Tanaka said. He hesitated uncomfortably. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, uh, just to make sure, I... Uh... Are you asking what I think you're asking about, Osawa said? Tanaka gave a slight nod. Understood, mm. Osawa said. Don't worry, I won't trouble you. Uh, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that, sir. Visibly relieved, Tanaka thanks, left the man. study. <sighs> <laughs> Still don't know what that's about, but whatever. Um, Osawa brought up a Never folder. call your, uh, boss fam. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> don't, don't be do like that. me. Don't be ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> Osawa brought up a folder named Wa underscore virus on his screen. Within the folder were enlarged images of the virus itself. He double clicked one of the images. It blew up on the monitor to reveal the pathogen in, intricate, in intricate detail. I can talk today, I swear. A specimen of the Wa hmm. virus was approximately 100 nanometers in diameter. 10,000 of them in line would take up barely a millimeter. But a single tiny virion upon entering the human body could become 2,000 in an hour. That speed of multiplication was nothing short of astonishing. Even the Ebola virus had a typical incubation period of seven days or so before infectees developed symptoms. For influenza, it was one or two. But the onset of the WA virus had happened in a mere 12 hours. Osawa viewed an image slideshow of the virus's propagation mechanism. It was a fascinating sight, no matter how many times he looked at it. Viruses existed to multiply, nothing more. They had no motives, no driving logic, nothing but simple multiplication. To Osawa, that fact held a certain air of mystery. If viruses had emotions, how would they feel about their lives? I don't know why we're getting so existential <laughs> mm -hmm. about this. We're like, uh, if listen, I was a virus, what would I do? That's it. <laughs> they just horny, that's it. He had thrown himself into virus research in search of answers to questions like that, answers that no man could truly know. His development of the antiviral agent had really been nothing more than another job responsibility. 
He felt no particular sense of duty to protect people from a killer virus. He was just happy for the chance to play around with Wah day after day. Another email arrived in his inbox. Osawa furrowed his brow as he scanned the message. Emergency alert. Oh, damn. Come to Heaven Publishing ASAP. If not, someone is going to die. Minori Minorikawa. Oh. Minorikawa, why? <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> what you did, fam? Uh, heaven Publishing? Minoru Minorikawa? Osawa wasn't familiar with either of those names. He wondered if it was related to the mysterious emails he'd, reserved, he'd received earlier. Or maybe the sender had some information about the kidnapping? The fact that the message had been signed with a real name instead of a pseudonym, along with its obvious urgency, certainly gave it an air of truth. And the words, someone is going to die, filled him with a wave of panic. Maria. There was no time to waste. In a rush, he found directions to Heaven Publishing on his computer, then slipped out of the house. Well, we didn't have a breakdown this time. Hmm, that's nice. Hmm. It took a good while to find his way to good the multi-tenant to building. I know, finally. Uh, the sign in front showed <laughs> that Heaven Publishing occupied the third and fourth floors. Osawa took the elevator to the third floor. He peeked inside the offices there, only to find the entire place empty. The fourth floor was likewise deserted. Hmm? There was a rope dangling from the ceiling, tied off into a noose. It all seemed rather sinister, but Osawa had no idea what it meant. He waited a good 30 minutes, anxious uh. the whole time. Sir, you should know. <laughs> yeah. The half hour turned to an hour, and then to two. It seemed that no one was going to turn up. Osawa headed back to the third floor. He decided to wait there for one more hour. By now, he was committed. The extra hour turned in into two. Exhausted, he dozed off in his chair, and when he came to, it was close to sundown. sunset already? He gazed out the window, the haze of sleep still clinging to his mind. He had the feeling he was forgetting something important, but the sight of the sun quietly setting over the cityscape made the crisis of life feel strangely distant. Just gonna have this moment of peace before we have a breakdown, it's fine. The time sunrise, of sunset, peace sunrise. and quiet he had longed for was right here. All right, yeah, we got a definite bad end. Uh, number 16, Escape from Reality. A mysterious email told Osawa to go to Heaven Publishing, but there was nobody there. This email was sent by Minori Kawa, of course. At around 11.30, he blasted out an email to all the reporters he knew, but in his hurry, he screwed up one of the addresses, which coincidentally delivered a copy of the message to Osawa. Obviously, this would have never happened if Minori Kawa hadn't rushed out that email. Well, someone needs to learn how to read. Um, <laughs> what? Reading? I don't know what that is. <laughs> All right. Do we want to do Minorikawa or Kano? Mm, well, yeah, keep out. let's... Wait, which one the, would change the doctor? Minorikawa, right? Minorikawa is going to change the doctor. In the email. Yep. Okay. Let's uh, save that fam. All right. Minorikawa's frantic journey had started 20 minutes earlier. No thanks to some bitch in a cab. Yeah. All right. He'd been at home working on an interview piece. Probably wants to be America's next top model. That's, that's <laughs> fine. He clucked, he clucked his tongue in annoyance as the ringing phone broke his train of thought. Why did someone always call right when the words were flowing? I have a real question Dang. about this, too. Because, like, seriously, it always happens. You sit down, you start writing something, you're like, oh my god, I'm doing this. And then someone has to come interrupt. <sighs> and they call you on the phone on and your exact eureka moment? Yeah, you know, they're like, you know what? You don't get this eureka moment, it's fine. Um, <laughs> no. 
And then when you try to ease back in, it's never quite the same. (laughs) Shit, they do it to me at work all the time. (laughs) I'll be sitting there going, I finally hit my stride. I got this down. And then all of a sudden someone will be like, can we have a meeting really quick? No. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, bitch, let me live. (sighs) Wow. Yeah. So, uh... F in the chat for whoever felt that. Uh, <laughs> if he didn't keep getting interrupted by some rude bitches, he probably could have wrapped this piece up in no time. Be quiet, he pointed at the telephone as he yelled. I'm writing here, God. <laughs> but his shouting did nothing to silence the ringing. Obviously, because it's a phone, sir. Yeah. All right. He didn't have much choice but to pick it up. All salty like, probably. <laughs> uh, Inorikawa speaking. There was no response. Hello? <laughs> he hesitated, ready to hang up. Was this a prank call? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's me. It's Toyama. <gasps> oh, <laughs> it was Teru Toyama, the president of Heaven Publishing. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, oh, what What do you want? If this is about work, I'm already booked pretty full. We've taken work from Heaven Publishing on several occasions, but the pay was hardly competitive. Lately, he'd been turning them down a lot, so he hadn't heard from Toyama in, like, a while. No, no, this isn't work-related. Then what do you want? I'm kind of pressed for time here. Working on some copy. Minorika was in no mood to beat around the bush. Mm. (laughs) Hmm. It seemed like <laughs> every conversation he had with Toyama went like this. Uh, uh, you're busy. That That's good. Busy's, busy's good when you're a freelancer. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, Toyama sounded unusually sympathetic. Hinorikawa found it off-putting. I hear sales have been good on your end. Oh, wait, that's, is nope, that you? That's, or me? that's you. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, he said cautiously, for this month's four-star general gossip and all. Four-star general gossip was a monthly magazine having publishing flagship publication. It had a small circulation and for the most part flew under the radar but once in a while they'd get some big scoop and sell it like cray cray. (laughs) This month's edition had come with a free scratch card. A gimmick that had moved 100,000 copies with ease. So everyone wants to win the lottery. Of course. Let's be honest here. (laughs) Five winnings. Right. Five winning symbols with a row wins 100,000 yen. Was it? Minorikawa asked. A weak, moist, moist <laughs> sound came through <laughs> that word. I, I hate came it. Came through the receiver. <laughs> ah! <sighs> hmm? Baff- baffled Minorikawa, <laughs> listening more closely. It came again, then again. Oh, these just moist noises. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it kind of sounded like sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying moist, and yes, I'm going to Miss- start sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toyama, are you crying because I said moist? Yes. Maybe there was not. another soft sob, <laughs> and then yet another. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, same. <laughs> What's going on? Where are you? Minoriko asked. At, at the office. Toyama managed, he let out another mewling whimper. Like a kitty. <laughs> what, what's the matter? <laughs> it's nothing. Uh, well, it's got to be something. Come on, what, what is it? Toyama gave no reply. And then, it hit me. I was fearing for my life at that point. <laughs> And then a serial killer came up behind me. 
<laughs> right, and then I got stabbed. The end, bad end, no. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Toyama, you still there? Do you want to play a game? <laughs> yeah. I'm scared. <sighs> Silence. Oh man, this ain't funny no more. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's what I thought it would But you know, this is why we can't have nice things. Of course not. <laughs> of course. Hold on. It's- Ah, there it is! What is it? What happened? <laughs> mm. Muff, 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 muff. <laughs> Look, mm, doesn't tell me anything. What the hell is going on? Toyama squeaked out a drawn-out whine. <sighs> okay, I'm sick of this. I'm hanging up now. Minori Kawa was about to break the connection when he heard Toyama murmur. The only thing I can do now Seven. is die. <laughs> oh, I was close. <laughs> <laughs> the taxi's tire squealed as the cab rounded a corner. <laughs> wow, that was a jump. The shift in momentum made me Minorikawa topple over in the back seat. There we go. Ten minutes on the dot. Thanks, fam. <laughs> the driver announced me. Norikawa righted himself and looked out the window. Should be a station. Nailed it. I knew you could do it, Mr. Kimizuka. You dog. You sly dog, you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Told the driver how to get to Heaven Publishing. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I paid for this. Shouldn't be more than five minutes further. I'd like to point out, we didn't get interrupted this time. Kano didn't decide right, he needed to have this cab for a matter of life or death that wasn't actually a matter of life or death. Um, right. Sir, sir, if, if I, I may ask. I think oh, wait, that's, that's you. you. <laughs> sir, if I may <laughs> ask, you. just what are you in such a hurry over? Uh, the death of my friend, son of a bitch. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Eh. Uh, Kimizuka bristled. Mm, I said <laughs> yeah. you're a nice man and I appreciate you. This is a Not good you, Christian the cab. The guy who's waiting on me. <laughs> right, this is a nice Christian cab. <laughs> Not you're the guy who's waiting on me, Minori Kawa said. I'm, I'm gonna give that son of a bitch a piece of my mind. Mm. <laughs> Imagine you're just a cab driver. And someone just yells at you, son of a bitch. Like, I know. Damn. That would be so bad. After you've the just, like, busted your ass to get him to the station in ten minutes, and he's decided he needs to go five minutes more. Right. The multi-tenant building where Heaven Publishing had its offices came into view. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> the taxi stopped outside. Minorikawa opened the door as he hurriedly reached for his wallet. Then he stopped. What if the worst had come to pass and he needed to take Toyama to a hospital? Shit. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Shouldn't he have the taxi wait here? Or would it be better to call an ambulance? It's, sir, is uh, there a problem? The driver asked. <laughs> Alright. Wait here, I'll be right back. Or no, I'm fine. You're a lifesaver. How much do I owe you? So are we going to have him wait or are we going... Wait here, I'll be right back. I, I really think we should, because in case, you know... Just in case. Wait here, I'll be right back. Yeah. We know your friend's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Minoriko was out of the cab in an instant and running for the building so he can cry in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Once inside, he avoided the elevator in favor of rushing up the stairs. Heaven Publishing rented out the third and fourth floors. In all likelihood, Toyama would be at the editing apartment of Four Star General Gossip on the fourth floor. Damn it, Toyama. Why you gotta be on the fourth floor? I know. Man? Damn. <laughs> when he got there, however, exhausted, the door was locked. Mr. Toyama! Hey, Mr. Toyama! He shouted and banged, but there was no reply. Something was seriously wrong. Minorikawa took a deep breath and then kicked the door in. Like an anime character. <laughs> Whoa! 
three Emma was standing on a stool and about to slip his head through a noose that hung from the ceiling. I'm glad it's that this dumb. man decided he was going to wait 15 minutes after he just gave us the world's worst, like, suicide phone call. <laughs> right. He what was the like, hell are you doing? You know what? I think I'm going to wait here. <laughs> right, 15 minutes. Just 15 I'm gonna minutes? be a dramatic bitch and do it, like, you know right he... when he comes through the door. Exactly. Damn. Gotta spread around the trauma. You know Norikawa lunged for Toyama. Yeah, I mean, he coulda, you know. He was probably scrolling through Instagram, seeing, liking <laughs> some posts, you know, as you do. Yeah, you know. <laughs> the two men... <laughs> casually, you Just know. Just casually. The two men crashed to the floor <laughs> in a tangled heap. A pile of clutter slid off a nearby desk and fell on top of them. Me, 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 Nori, caught up. <laughs> I can talk. <laughs> me, me, <laughs> you can't, and I'm proud of you. Me, 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 Nori, caught up. What are you doing? Toyama whined. Dragging himself back to his feet proved something of a challenge. That's what. I'd like to know, bitch! <laughs> Minorikawa's fury was mounting. What the hell is this all about? Damn! <laughs> Just walk through the door! <laughs> he jabbed an accusing finger at the noose hanging on the ceiling. Oh. That. One of the fluorescent lights died and I was just swapping it out. Oh, don't you feed me that <laughs> bullshit! <laughs> what was that phone call all about? That business about how the only thing you could do was die. Like, tell me. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> Funny, right? Oh, that ain't no joke, bitch. <laughs> no, that ain't no... Mm. Toyama curled his lips into a faint semblance of a smile. But it was probably a salty smile. <laughs> Minorikawa was, wasn't buying it, but he didn't have time to press the issue. All he could do is probably bitch slap him. Maybe. A cute little voice echoed through the editing office. Daddy, I'm back from the store. Oh, damn. That's real cute. <laughs> little girl came in carrying a length of rubber gas tubing. Why? <laughs> okay. That's what my children bring to me every day. Sure. <laughs> it was Toyama's fifth grade daughter, Hana. Hana is Aww, Teruo Toyama's... Only daughter, currently 10 years old. The night Hana was born in Shibuya Central Hospital, there was an unexpected fireworks display outside the window of the maternity ward. As he looked out at the bursting rockets, Teruo decided to name his daughter Hana after the Japanese word for fireworks, Hanabi. Mm, that's so cute! <laughs> Sorry. He's like, hello. <laughs> I, I, I'm small. Yes. <laughs> uh, Toyama? You were planning on using that hose to... What? <laughs> he hesitated to end his sentence with gas yourself to death. <laughs> as you would in front of, you know, a daughter. Huh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's almost gas heater season after all. Hmm. The hell it is! <laughs> it was a beautiful sunny April day outside. Well, you know what you're doing, bitch? You know what you're doing? <laughs> you saying, a lie in April. It's your lie in April. <laughs> well, you know how sensitive I am to the cold? Mm -hmm. This was getting a truly... This was getting truly ridiculous. Minorikawa got up in his face. Oh, wow. he That's really in his face. He's like, getting very into his face. <laughs> I don't think Minorikawa oh. has a idea of what personal space is at all he doesn't know what a bubble is no like is this your bubble well let me invade it bitch <laughs> listen just explain to me what the heck is going on okay he kept his voice low but his eyes were steely <laughs> hana clung tightly to her father gazing worriedly up at the two men no. Why are you so close to my dad? No. <laughs> no, I, I. It's it's just. <sighs> Toyama let out a long, heavy sigh of resignation. All right, we have our keep out. I think we know where our mm -hmm. jump is. To be completely honest. 
Mm. Um, Because if I remember correctly, Mm. we got it with Tama. I vaguely remember having Mm. to jump. Oh, yeah. You told me to tell you something. Yeah. Like that. So we can actually, I think we can go through Minority Cabo more if you want, or we can do Kano. Mm. Let's do the jumpy thingy. That seems like fun. Let's go ahead and jump. Do skid do we can too. Woo. <laughs> Oops, I, I vaguely remember where this is. Sai Minori Minori Kaba. Alright, we are going from Tama at eleven twenty to Minori Kaba at eleven twenty. Da 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 Oh snap. No, I. It, it, it's <laughs> oh. just. <sighs> Toyama let out a long, heavy sigh of resignation. It, it's the str- scratch cards that were in the four star general gossip. That's where our problem is. Scratch cards are a type of lottery card featuring areas printed with a special silver ink. These silver ink areas can be scratched off with just a fingertip or a coin to reveal potential winnings, providing a quick speed lotto fix. In order to prevent the symbols or letters underneath the silver from showing through, the back of the card is printed in black. Somehow you always seem to lose when you've got your hopes up, but manage to win when you least expect it. Hmm. Man, he looks so so flexible. I, I wish know. I was that. Fun. Anyway, <laughs> and what is the problem? If you shine a light on the cards from behind, you can see me. where the winning symbols are. <laughs> oh wait, that's oh. <laughs> if you shine a light on the cards from behind, you can see where the winning symbols are. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah, that, that's 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 messed up. That's that's the problem, fam. I messed things up <laughs> dealing with the printing company. All of this. He gestured vaguely. It's my fault. My responsibility. He proceeded to explain the situation in detail. Word was quick to leak on the internet that there was a way to find the winning symbols, and suddenly thousands of card holders turned up on mass to collect. I mean, I would. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not get rich quick. <laughs> mm, right. Mm, about that. <laughs> Heaven Publishing was hit with a massive financial liability, and the employees rushed to flee a sinking ship. Before Toyama realized, he was the only one left in the company, and he was up against the deadline for the next month's four-star general gossip. If I have to drop next month's issue, Val- I'll be stuck in debt even deeper. And if that happens... I'm finished. <sighs> Toyama gave a dismal groan. Oof. How about we don't do any more lottery cards? Yeah. <laughs> so, don't drop the issue, Minorikawa snapped. He pounded his fist right into the side of a cardboard box. Like, like a dramatic anime <laughs> character. But Toyama just shook his head weakly. I've been up for three days straight trying to fill the pages. It, it's not enough. I can't do the impossible. Mmm. Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped his gaze to the floor. Countless scratch cards lay scattered about. They'd probably been amidst the pile that had fallen off the desk earlier. Each card showed a neat row of five win symbols. You can't know if it's impossible if you don't see it through. I'll never make it in time. The proof needs to be done by 8 o'clock this evening. The proof is, a f- is the final stage before printing, when the copy or manuscript is checked for errors. Not sending corrected proofs to the printer before the deadline can result in the book or magazine in question not making it out onto the shelves in time for release day. Thank you, Proof Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, it's uh, a <laughs> da 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 jazz hands. It's um, it's uh, lagging a little bit for me. Uh oh. I'm still on this proof screen. Uh oh. <laughs> no. Yeah. You want me to tag in? 
Yeah, tag in until All right. <laughs> my internet decides to not be evil. Well then, Minori Kawa thought to himself. He let out a sigh, then hand is held out to Hana. Hana, would you mind giving me that hose? Hana gave her father a quick look, then handed the rubber hose to Minori Kawa. This won't be necessary! He tossed the rubber hose into the trash, then jabbed his finger at Toyama. Show me the layout and the draft proposal for next month's issue. Toyama blinked a few times in disbelief. Huh? You, you can't possibly be serious. I'm trying to help! Now show me the layout and the proposal before I change my mind! After a brief, incredulous pause, Toyama hurried off to grab the paperwork. A layout, in publishing speak, is an outline of a magazine showing which articles will occupy which pages. Minorikawa gave it a quick once over, finding that 12 of the pages were still blank and untouched. I had to punch whatever writers had been assigned those pages. See what I mean? Toyama said. It's hopeless. He sounded perversely proud of his failure. Getting enough material to, twel to fill 12 pages by 8 o'clock. Yeah, it was definitely a tall order, all right. Says who? Minorikawa replied. Remember who you're talking to here? You seriously think you can do it? You're joking, right? Minorikawa shot back. I seriously know I can do it. There's nothing in this world that I hate more than a bad joke. Why are you doing this for me? Toyama was getting misty-eyed. I'm not doing it for you, you spineless wimp. I'm doing this for poor little Hana. M Minorikawa, I, I... I'm so sorry. Toyama bowed his head so deeply Minorikawa thought he might put his face through the floor. Don't apologize to me. Apologize to your daughter. Oh, forgive me. Please forgive me, Hana. Toyama clutched her tightly in his arms. The girl hugged him back on the verge of tears. Hey now, enough of the waterworks. I've got your backs. Don't you worry about a thing. Minorikawa picked up the draft proposal for the pages that needed filling. The words Shibuya Scuttlebutt Special were, were plastered across the cover sheet in big bold type. Say that five times fast. Okay, so a 12 page... I, I would not. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would be hell to try to do. Um, okay, so a 12 page special edition block on Shibuya. Fair enough. And first on the docket... Drink yourself thin with burning hammer. This reeked of a scam. The only way drinking more of something would make you lose weight would be if it were mixed with a laxative, probably. Still, there wasn't enough time to tweak the layout plan now. According to the proposal write-up, a product demo was scheduled for 1 p.m. that day. The location printed out on the map was blurry and hard to make out, but Minorikawa had a rough idea where it was. Looked like he didn't have much of a choice but to swing by in the hopes of getting more material. He scanned further along into the proposal. Society of Surveillance. Hidden cameras installed throughout Shibuya. The rise and fall of Shibuya's vigilante squad. Where are they now? Washed up screenwriters showcase. Sexy squared. Twins share top prize at local university beauty contest. Shibuya now! Black market organ trafficking in Shibuya? Shadowy foreign crime syndicate exposed. Oh god. Um, <laughs> those, 12 pe those seven pieces were to <laughs> fill the 12 empty pages. That was the plan at any rate. But there wasn't enough material there to make any headway. The Shibuya Now article didn't even have any proposed content. That This sucked hardcore. Didn't look like there was much material for the rise and fall of Shibuya's vigilante squad, either. The notes suggested that a few years prior, a group of youngsters in Shibuya had banded together to help fight crime in their neighborhoods. At this point, however, things had flipped around completely, and they'd become a gang of street punks themselves. A turn to the dark side. It had the makings of an interesting article, to be sure, but tracking down this gang would take time. Minorikawa was personally intrigued by the... I don't know why it keeps thinking I have a microphone. Uh, by the one about organ harvesting right. in Shibuya. Seriously, I have not plugged anything into this ever. Um, the rumor <laughs> was that organs were being smuggled out of Southeast Asia and fenced locally at a tremendous price. 
There was even a plan to ascertain the, the authenticity of these claims. Fascinating. If we knew Nikawa was going to be spending all day gathering other material, though, he didn't have much time to spare for it. Shibuya now! The rise and fall of Shibuya's vigilante squad. Black market organ trafficking in Shibuya? Minori Kawa decided that one of those three would have to go. He thought about it long and hard as he stared at the draft proposal. There was a good chance he'd really screw himself over if he picked the wrong one. Finally, he decided to cut. Okay, we get to choose. Do we want to cut? Ooh, Shibuya okay. now. The rise and fall of Shibuya's vigilante squad. Or black market organ trafficking in Shibuya. Hmm. Mm. Will we get in trouble for any of these? Uh, Probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I mean, black market organ trafficking in Shibuya seems like the Yakuza would come after us <laughs> if we exposed them. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to die. Uh, and then Rise and Fall of Shibuya. Same. So I guess... Sh hmm. I think that the Rise and Fall of Shibuya's Vigilante Squad... I think that the Vigilante Squad is SOS. That right. would be my guess based on the fact that they were a good group and now they're a bad group. Mm hmm. But I have no idea what Shibuya now Shibuya is Shibuya now seems too catchy. <laughs> right. It seems so catchy. <laughs> You know what? Shibuya now. Go go away. Alright. We'll take... I think we're gonna die, but you know, it's fine. It's okay. We've died how many times now? It's fine. Um, yeah. He fine. decided to cut Shibuya now. He didn't have time to make up an article out of whole cloth. His goal was just to make sure that the four-star general gossip made it into the press at all. Society of Surveillance. Where are they now? Sexy Squared. Those three pieces had individuals slated for interviews, but no appointments had been made with any of them. Unscheduled interviews were a dicey prospect. Minorikawa decided to call them up on his cell as he made his way down the list. The only one he managed to get a hold of was Shinosuke Orai from the Where Are They Now piece. Shinosuke Orai is a former broadcast writer. He's appeared in various popular variety shows on commercial network Sun TV. He currently heads up a small theater tr troupe known as the Wandering Angels, operating out of Shibuya. Later today, the troupe is putting on a performance at Theater Ace in Sakura Gao Gaokacho. He said he'd be That's willing... That's a long one. So I... Uh, like, it's so... I, I hate the, like, reading them in Romaji because it's like three characters in Japanese and all of a sudden it's like mm -hmm. 12 letters. And I have to get through, like, most of the right. word before I figure out which one it is. Um, Sakura Gaokato. Sakura Gaokato. Uh, he said he'd be willing to give it a 15-minute interview after 2.30. Minori Kawa sighed. He'd just have to get material from the others in a more impromptu fashion, then. Putting his nose to the grindstone, he started throwing together a schedule for the day. Was it possible to get all that material and write it all up and still finish the whole thing by 8 o'clock? It was no use. No matter how he tweaked it, none of his simulations ended up with him having a proof ready on time. He just needed one more thing. And that was another writer. Minorikawa zoomed through his contacts list, calling up all the freelancers he knew. The results were depressing. Answering machines. Overseas on business. In the hospital. Currently doing time. Before long... What the... <laughs> before long, he'd called everyone he could think of except for okay. one. Novice freelancer Chiaki Iso. Chiaki was a bit of an odd duck. A reporter who was scared of talking to people. Minorikawa had never known anyone who Did became... talk to animals? So hopelessly flustered in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Hopelessly flustered is in a such a rattled state as to become unable to speak. Chiaki's tendency to become flustered is famous among her freelance writer colleagues. Once, she conducted an hour-long interview during which she only managed to ask the, her interview subject's name. Yet another chapter in the legend of hopelessly flustered Chiaki. Wow. If she couldn't talk to people, she, sure, oh. she certainly couldn't do interviews. And if she couldn't get any real interview content, she wouldn't be able to write much in the way of copy. Would she come to his aid if asked? Quite probably. The issue was whether she would hinder more than help. 
Hmm. All right, are we going to call her up? Or are we going to try to email all our contacts in the hopes that we can get someone else? Uh, let's see. Well, this Chiaki person, if she only talks... Like, she she doesn't really like, talk to people. No. <laughs> what makes us think that she's gonna talk to us? I mean, I assume I mean, that she'll talk granted... to, like, oh, okay. people she knows. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, she wouldn't so have any contacts. <laughs> but I assume that she has problems True. doing interviews. Which is kind of what we need her to okay, do. Okay, like in person. Yeah. Shit. Mmm. Mmm. I feel like she's a secret unlockable character <laughs> or something. So I'm just okay, I'll I'll give her one chance. And if she lets me down then we just go back and just call other people. Alright. This yeah. was no time for beggars to be choosers. Minori Kaba decided to call up Chiaki. Hey girlfriend <laughs> The phone rang several times before a sleepy voice finally answered. Chiaki? Hi, it's Minorikawa. Are you free today? Huh? What? She seemed thrown by the abrupt question. Did you just wake up? Huh? Uh, no, no, I mean, no. Yeah. Good morning. Her voice still sounded <laughs> half asleep. So then uh, I'm guessing you don't have any work slated for today, as usual. Pretty much. Mm. No work, no money, no food. Nothing to do except sleep. If I'm not awake, I sh can't dwell on how hungry I am. She didn't sound well. Almost like she literally didn't have anything to eat. Well, I've got work for you. I'm over at Four Star General Gossip. Get over here ASAP. What? You really mean it? That seemed to finally wake her up. Yeah, but hurry! <laughs> Minorikawa decided he'd assign Chiaki to the rise and fall of Shibuya's vigilante squad. First, I want you to take a look around Shibuya for this group of vigilante types. By vigilantes, you mean people who have volunteered to help prevent crime? There was a note of relief in Chiaki's voice. Yeah, that's right. Except apparently now they've turned into a nasty street gang. Did... Did you say street gang? Nuh-uh. No way. Absolutely not. Minorikawa could almost see her shaking her head on the other end on the other end of the line. What if I get killed or sold into slavery overseas or something? He doubted Damn. there was not much chance of the latter, or the former for that matter, but still he understood her concern. Alright, I hear you, he said. Then how about you go hang around Shibuya Station and do some street interviews for me? Street interviews? There was a nervous waver in Chiaki's voice now. Yeah, just, just talk to normal, regular people walking outside the train station. That should be fine, yeah? But, 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 but Mr. Mino, I... Street interviews aren't really my, uh... Apparently, it was beyond her capacity to give him a simple no. No buts. Just interview at least ten people and get me an article by six o'clock. Okay... <laughs> Minorikawa had originally planned to ask the Shibuya Now piece because it didn't have any content, but getting some quotes from people on the street would at least make for a useful filler. That gave him a sudden idea. He'd take on the vigilante story himself and have Chiaki handle Shibuya Now. That was plenty of work to keep two people occupied throughout the day. The more time-consuming orga organ market story would have to be cut. After explaining what kind of interviews he was after, Minorikawa hung up. Okay. I've gotten us another writer. We'll get through Toyama. Somehow. Toyama shrugged gloomily. Yeah, well, the thing is, th there's actually one more problem. Are you kidding me? Oof. Minorikawa couldn't hide the irritation in his voice. What is it now? The loan company is sending a debt collector over at 4 o'clock. 
But as you can imagine, I don't have a single yen to give them. That's less than ideal, yeah. So what's the plan? Well, they've said provisionally that, <laughs> that if next month's issue gets published, they'll be willing to wait on repayment. Then there's no problem. The issue's coming out, guaranteed. But they're not going to take my word on that anymore. I'm going to need to prove it. If we could fill, say, half of the 12 pages by that time, by the time we sh by the time they show up, I could probably convince them. <laughs> All right, Minori Kaba said wearily. So, for starters, we need six pages by four o'clock? They had to get all twelve pages done as it was. That made a perfect midpoint to shoot for. Any other problems you'd like to let me know about? No, Toyama said. No, that's all. I really am sorry about this, Minorikawa. Again, he bowed his head low. Minorikawa felt distinctly awkward. He'd known Toyama for years, and he'd never been kowtowed to the like this before. Yeah, well, just let me handle it, alright? Minorikawa unfolded a map of Shibuya. The first order of business was deciding where to begin getting content. He marked the editing office with a circle, then considered where to head next. Diet drink sales demo, center guy. Where are they now? Sakura Gaoka, or the theater ace. Uh, Society of Surveillance, Dokenzaka, Endo Electronics. Sexy Squared, Midoriyama Academy. Midoriyama Academy is a university associated with Midoriyama High School. Notable alumni include famous actress Masami Nagahama and National High School Baseball Championship winning pitcher, The Tissue Prince. Its educational philosophy is summed up in its slogan, Words, Skill, and Beauty. A very high percentage of winners of the Miss Midoriyama contest go on to careers in the entertainment industry. Shibuya Vigilantes, location Get DVD. It. I know, right? The diet drink sales demo was at 1 o'clock, and the interview with Shinosuke Orai for Where Are They Now was slated for 2.30, so those times were set. The question was what to do in the interim. Hmm. All right. Should we go to Center Guy and get an interview as the, at the diet drink sales demo, or should we go to Dogenzaka and check out Endo Electronics? Let's go. I think if we go to the sales drink demo, we're going to end up drinking some of that. And destroying the venue. Right, that's what I'm afraid of. Exactly. So let's not do that. So let's go to Nogenzaka and check let's out Endo Electronics. <laughs> it was a bit of a hike, yeah, but... Yeah, because we don't want to... Yeah, we... Destroy things. Yeah. It was a bit of a hike, but maybe he should go to Dogenzaka and check out Endo Electronics. Yeah, that should give him what he needed to put together the Society of Surveillance piece. Okay, I'm heading out. And don't even think about doing anything else stupid while I'm gone. Got it? Minorikawa hustled out of the editing office, hoping Toyama would take his admonition to heart. What a good, helpful bean. I know. Exiting the building, he hopped into the taxi that was waiting outside. Thanks for waiting. Can you get me to Dogenzaka ASAP? Son of a bitch. Minorikawa bristled. <laughs> I beg your pardon? That son of a bitch you wanted to give a piece of your mind to, sir. Was he waiting for you like you expected? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> And I damn well did give him a piece of my mind, too. <laughs> Glad to hear it, sir. The taxi sped off. I like this man. We should give him a tip. I know. We're going to be lucky if we can Best pay him boy. by the end of the day with how much we're going to be using his services. But, um... True. Minorikawa pulled out the proposal and looked over it again. The idea for the surveillance story revolved around the claim that hidden cameras had been installed throughout Shibuya's shopping districts, upwards of 500 of them. Supposedly, these had eliminated lots of blind spots, and the crime rate in the area had dropped significantly. The cameras were managed by Daisuke Endo, the owner of Endo Electronics and chairman of the local downtown community. committee. I can read. Uh, that was Minorikawa's first mission, then. He needed to get this guy's story. Oh, Daddy! 
Is Minorigawa going to find out that he's getting remarried? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Scanning the side of the road, Minorikawa, sudden Minorikawa finally spotted a rundown electronics shop. The sign out front, which looked like it might fall off at any moment, read Endo Electronics. Right here is fine. The taxi stopped and Minorikawa pulled a 10,000 yen bill from his wallet. Keep the, keep the change, he said. What? Look, don't sweat it. The name's Minori Minorikawa and I'm a freelance writer. I care about two things, what's real and what's true. There's real worth to what you've done for me. That there is a token of my appreciation. It's not much, but please, take it. Minorikawa slid out of the taxi and headed for the electronics store. Can you Man, imagine? I wish he would tip me. I know. Can you imagine someone just gives you a $100 bill and is like, you know what? Let me give you my entire personal agenda. Um. Right. Holy shit. Inside, Endo Electronics looked more like a mountain of hoarded junk than an actual business. Towering piles of ancient appliances stretched toward the ceiling. Old television sets with five, di with five dial knobs leaned against computers with five-inch floppy drives. Five-inch floppy drives are floppy a storage medium for personal computers in production from 1976 to 2000. To 2001. The magnetic discs are sheathed in I'm paper or plastic jackets and are known for their tendency to flop around in one's hand. Technically speaking, they're 5.25 inches in diameter. Incidentally, Door Door, uh, released in 1983, the debut title from this game's producer, Kokichi Nakamura, was produced in a 5 inch floppy version. Oh my god. I, uh, hey, kids. Have you seen a floppy disk in real life? Because I have. Like, I can say that I've seen one, but I've never used one. Like, I'm too young for that. I've used one. <laughs> I've used one. Oh my god, I, <laughs> oh, help me. I'm, I'm gonna, it's okay, I'm just gonna go on the floor now, and I'm gonna curl up into a ball <laughs> and scream about the 90s. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> what possible it's use fine. could there be for all this outdated stuff? Mr. Endo, are you in here? Minorikawa called out. It's okay, I am, a, I am outdated. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? You might be old, but you are still loved. <sighs> Nobody came out to greet him. Thank you. The shop was definitely open, though. Surely the proprietor hadn't left it unattended. Hey, Mr. Endo! Come on, I know you're in there. After a short wait, Minorikawa heard sounds from the living space behind the, behind the shop. A door opened to reveal a tired-looking, middle-aged man. Yeah, what do you want? Are you Mr. Endo? <laughs> Minorikawa asked. I am, the man said guardedly. And I'm sorry, but I'm in the middle of something at the moment. Could you come back tomorrow, or... Please, just give me a minute. I'm a freelance writer. It names me Norikawa. Minorikawa showed Endo his business card. I'm writing an article for the four-star general gossip. Huh. A magazine piece, huh? Precisely. So if I could just have a little bit of your time today... The phone rang, cutting him off before he could get down to business. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me for a moment. Endo reached into the clutter and pulled out a telephone. Hello, Endo Electronics. The proprietor listened for a moment, then raised an eyebrow. Yeah, that's a problem, all right. All right, understood. I'll try and get a hold of the customer then. Endo set the receiver back down. What was that all about? Minorikawa asked. Oh, uh, yesterday I sold a dry ice machine, and the manufacturer just called to let me know the model's defective defective. Apparently, once it starts making dry ice, it won't stop. I need to tell the customer I have to recall the machine and refund their deposit. Please give me a moment. Endo shifted through some sales slips, read a number off of one, and made a phone call. Nobody picked up on the other end, however. That's right, he grumbled to himself. He said they had some performance today. Performance? Minorikawa asked. I sold it to a guy from some 
theater troupe or something. They're called the Wandering Angels or something? The Wandering Angels is a theater troupe run by Shinosuke Arai. This afternoon at 5.30 p.m., they're performing their 22nd piece, Au revoir. Au revoir. Um, right now, all of the actors are already at the theater except for Akiomi Mondo, who plays the rival of the main character, Ryu. The angry production chief has sent his assistant to Mondo's apartment, but he doesn't yet know what awaits him there. Continued in The Tale of Wandering Angels, Episode 2. Six episodes in all. Ooh. <laughs> spicy. I know. The Wandering Angels? That was Shinosuke Arai's theater gr- troupe. Minorikawa had an interview with him booked for 2.30. Anyhow, what can I do for you? Minorikawa hastily explained what he was after, and O gave him a dubious look. As I said earlier, I'm a bit busy right now. Busy cleaning up, I hope. How do you get anything done in this mess? Wait, are are you this rude to all of your interview subjects? Five minutes! Just give me five minutes of your time, please. You've got to be joking. Go on, get the hell out of here. Endo headed for his back room in a huff. Fine, then I'll just have to write about what you've already told me. Namely, that Endo Electronics sells defective merchandise. Huh? Just, what are you implying? Did you, or did you not sell that theater troupe a defective piece of equipment? Look, I'm gonna get in touch with them as soon as- I am betting they're in a hurry preparing for their performance. I doubt you'll be getting through to them today. Endo bit his lip. Now that I have your attention, Minorikawa said, let's make a deal. What kind of deal? He's that guy. He's that guy. He is. I'm meeting with a member of the Wandering Angels a little later today. I can let them know all about the dry ice machine for you. In exchange, all you have to do is give me my interview. Endo scowled. And where's your proof that you'll be meeting with the Wandering Angels? I might take advantage of a guy when he's down, Minorikawa replied. But one thing I'm not is a liar. The shopkeeper took a few minutes to think about it. Fine, he grumbled. Five minutes, that's all you get. Minorikawa whipped his notepad out of his coat like he was drawing a gun. Then let's get right down to it, shall we? Okay. Go right ahead. So I hear that over 500 surveillance cameras have been installed throughout Shibuya's shopping districts. Yeah, that's right. Why so many? We used to have a lot of delinquents in town. Delinquents are young people who act rowdy or cause trouble, often at arcades or convenience store parking lots, and who frequently resort to petty theft or other mischief, also referred to in more outmoded terms as ruffians or hoodlums. Endo said the word with marked distaste. Oh, yeah. I remember there being some problem kids around. They were real punks. They vandalized my signs, made a mess in my storehouse. They were just awful. I see. Minorikawa scribbled diligently in his notepad. Heck, my own son put together a sort of vigilante squad to help teach those punks a lesson. Wait... Vigilante squad? Whoa, hold up right there for a sec. Minorikawa jutted out his hand to interrupt. This guy's son was part of the vigilante squad? What a stroke of luck! Maybe he could also provide some info for the article on the gangs of Shibuya. Sorry, I, I don't mean to tell you, to get too far off topic here, but could you tell me the name of the group your son belongs to? They call, them, they call themselves SOS. Prided themselves on being the top gang in Shibuya and all that. SOS was originally a, yell, a group of well-meaning young people who would get together downtown as a sort of vigilante squad, trying to keep Shibuya clean and safe. In those days, the group never engaged in theft or other criminal activities. More recently, however, SOS has become one of the biggest gangs in Shibuya, resorting to defacing public property with graffiti, shoplifting, and shaking people down for cash. Achi would never! The top gang in Shibuya? Did Mm -hmm. I really just hit the jackpot right here? Not to pat myself on the back, but go me. Yes. (laughs) All I have to do is step outside and the story finds me. I think I might be a natural at this. As it happens, I'd also like to interview people from SOS. Would you be able to put me in touch with your son? Yeah, sure. But you should know that my son isn't in the gang anymore, and it looks like we have our jump right here to Achi. Um, 
So we can unlock Son. him. Woo! Oh. Minorikawa hesitated. Guess he's of no use to me then. Oh, believe me. I know how you feel. The look on Endo's face spoke volumes. How dare you! Excuse me, sir? That's Achi you're talking about. He That's is the best an angel! Boy. There was no point in Screw interviewing you, Endo's son anymore if he wasn't with the gang anymore. It figured that Minorikawa's run of good luck would end eventually. Still, he'd gotten a lead in the form of a name. S.O.S. That was progress. Alright, so back to the matter at hand. He flipped his notebook back open. What did you decide to do about all these juvenile delinquents? I set up a tiny web camera in order to protect my property. A web camera is cameras designed to send video information to a computer via the internet. Look carefully and you can often spot them outside private residences and even on public streets, where they're installed for use in surveillance. Given the risks of transmitted data being intercepted, the images recorded by such cameras are usually encrypted to prevent playback by unauthorized third parties. Many landmarks and attractions make their camera footage publicly available online. If you have a ring doorbell, that's a web camera. Okay. In case you wanted to know. Uh, I see. And I'm guessing... Time to be scared and paranoid forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I work in this shit. I am scared and paranoid forever. Um, <laughs> I so see. Sorry for you. And I'm guessing the webcam did the trick? Sure did. And so then the other local businesses heard about it and started asking me to install them some for them. Web cameras aren't particularly expensive, so it wasn't too tough to set them all over downtown. So, who's in charge of these security cameras? Members of the downtown business committee take turns. The cameras are connected by a wireless network that business owners can access throughout the area. A wireless network, we're talking about a LAN or local area network. A communication system that can be only used within a limited geographical area. A wireless LAN transmits using electronic signals. Although convenient because it doesn't require cable attachments, there is a risk of signals conveyed in this way being intercepted by a third party. Your Wi-Fi password? Yeah. <laughs> How's your security for oh, this whoa. wireless network? Uh, no problems on that front. Endo seemed surprised at the question. All of the footage sent over the network is fully encrypted. Encryption is the process of encoding data so that it is indecipherable by a third party. Restoring it encrypted data to its initial form requires what's called a key, a program designed for this purpose. There are two types of such cryptographic systems. Secret key cryptosystems use the same key for both encryption and decryption. Public key cryptosystems use a public key to encrypt the data, but require a private key known by the recipient in order to, to decrypt. If you are playing this in this century, uh, secret key crypto, <laughs> crypto systems is now called symmetric encryption. Public key cryptosystems is now asymmetric encryption. In in case you are very confused about this. Hmm. <laughs> but it's good to have an expert on in that. I know, I, I hate when we do this stuff that I actually know because I sit here and go, but that's not it's kind of right. <laughs> but it's not fully right. <laughs> it's like you're outdated, bitch. I know. <laughs> like, that's what you get when you have people who aren't experts writing about it. Um <laughs> but still, people can't feel too good about being recorded on camera without their knowledge, don't you think? Minorikawa asked. The shopkeeper's expression darkened. We hope to strike a balance between crime prevention and protecting individual privacy. Uh-huh. And who determines what that balance is? Minorikawa let a note of challenge slip into his voice. That would be me. I've been entrusted with the management of the security cameras. I see. So essentially, you're providing your own moral oversight. Are you implying that I'm abusing my authority? Endo shot back. I'm doing this in the name of public order. Right. You've had your five minutes. Now get out of here. The shopkeeper stood up and headed into the back. I'll be sure to let the wandering angels know about the dry ice machine. Minorikawa hollered at the closing door. All right. Wandering angels, episode two. When Akio Mimondo didn't show up at the theater at the meetup type, production assistant Yukio Tozuka went to call on him at his apartment. 
Upon arriving, Tezuka found that the place had been staked out by debt collectors. Mondo had borrowed 300,000 yen, and they wouldn't leave his home until he paid up. It looked like the only way to save Mondo was to give the debt collectors the operating funds for the theater, but before Tozuka could head back to relay this news, the props master, Shinichi Bando, showed up. Continued in episode 3. Endo didn't reply. Minotakawa had gotten enough of a story to put an article together, so he decided to hurry to a coffee shop and get started on some copy. He was making his way down along Dogenzaka when his cell phone rang. The incoming call display showed Chiaki's name. Chiaki, what's going on? Oh, it's no use. She sounded like she was on the verge of tears. What's no use? I can't do this. I just, I just can't talk to people passing by on the street. What? Why not? It's just that everyone seems so busy when they're walking past. If I try to interrupt them, they're going to be all mad at me. Well, who the hell cares if they get mad? Minorikawa was ready to start ripping his hair out. I don't want them to be mad at me. He's going to throw hands. She whimpered again. Well, this wasn't about what she wanted, was it? She was supposed to be working, not whining. Look, Chiaki, you need to get me those interviews, period. Do I make myself clear? He hung up before she could squeeze in an objection. Damn it, Minorikawa muttered. Just what I needed, one more thing to worry about. He pulled at his hair a few times, then cast his worried, gla his worried gaze in the direction of Shibuya Station. And we have hit our to be continued with him. We made it. Ooh. For one character. Ooh. Out of five. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> out of five. Aw, yeah. Ten out of ten. All right. So we know that he's out of the way. Um, Do you want to stop for tonight since you're having technical issues, or do we want to do one more? Um. Actually, that's a good question for you, though. Like, how tired are you? Like, my... I, I just checked my speed, and I'm at point four. Mm. Zero point four. Okay, how about... I don't know if that's good. We do the jump to Achi. Because I'd do that one anyways, okay. and we are at... Yeah. 11.50 with him. So, that should be a pretty short one. And then we can call it for tonight. Yeah. Okay, so... Sounds good to me. We're gonna go ahead and jump. Wee! Blue Skid do we can too. <laughs> Alright, my son, and we are going to jump from Norikawa at 11.50 to Achi at 11.50. I love how Achi always looks like so shonen hero. I love him. It's great. He is a shonen hero. Long hair, don't care. Mm -hmm. He told me, look! There it was! A blue van had appeared nearby, parked in a spot that had been empty previously. Achi couldn't see who was inside, but there was definitely something fishy about it. Besides, there weren't any other blue cars around, so this had to be it. He'd been right. The crooks had come back after all. I'm gonna go take a quick look, Achi said. You wait here. But before he could carry out his plan, he told me jumped to her feet. Without a word, she rushed toward the van. Hold on! I said wait! Oh god, girl. She wasn't slowing down. Achi caught hold of her arm. Wait! This could be dangerous! What if the kidnapper's in there? And what if my sister is in there? I have to go help her! Achi knew full well what it was like to be impulsive, but this was one situation where cooler mm -hmm. heads would have to, have to prevail. We can't just hang out here, she insisted. What if the car takes off again? That's why I said I was going to go take a look first. But isn't that dangerous? What if they do something to my sister because some random guy comes snooping around? Oh. Huh. Yeah, you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> Achi thought as fast as he could. The criminal told he told me to get into the van. There had to be some specific reason for that. What if they were planning to abduct her He had candy. Well? Yeah. Whatever the case, he couldn't just let her go. He had to make a snap decision. All right. Are we going to insist on going first, or are we going to go together? Mm. 
Insist on going first because I feel like someone fun to grab poor little Hitomi. All right. Look, just let me go first. I don't want to put you at any risk. Hitomi's determination wavered at the look in Achi's eyes. Please, he continued. We have no idea who or what we might run into. If I think they're going to try to run off again, I'll give some signal. Then you can come along, and I doubt they'll be interested in leaving then. He told me he gave a reluctant nod. Please be careful. Strategy. <laughs> and tell me if my sister's in there. I will. You can count on it. Achi stepped out into the open and started walking toward the van. He tried his best to look as if he wasn't paying it any attention. Yep, I am just an ordinary passerby. As he got <laughs> nearer, he tried to sneak a glimpse inside. The van's dark window film made it hard to see who might be inside, or even how many people. Casually, he moved closer still to get a better look. Oh, hello, guys! Suddenly, the sliding door burst open, and several people jumped out. None of them were Japanese. <laughs> Within moments, oh, no. Achi was surrounded. Whoa, what? Hey, what's the deal? Achi said. He let out a little chuckle. Man, that thing must be packed. How many seats you got in that thing, anyway? He took another step toward the vehicle and looked inside. It's a clown car, it's fine. Yeah. One of the men pulled a knife from inside his jacket, thrusting it out in Achi's direction. He had probably meant it as a simple threat, but on reflex, Achi went into self-defense mode, kicking him right in the jaw. Good job. <laughs> there was a loud crack as his foot connected. The man dropped out like a light. The others stared, then rushed him. Oh no. Well, this sure hadn't gone as planned. Too late to take it back now. The damage was done. <laughs> Achi was just going to have to take out the rest of these bunks, too. He nimbly shifted, to, shifted his feet, evading their initial attack. Having to take these guys on three to one wasn't going to be pretty. Achi! He heard it. He told me cry out. Crap! He hadn't given any, any signal, but she'd come out of hiding anyway! He told me stay back! God damn it. How was he supposed to fight off three guys and protect her at the same time? What could he do? What should he do? The Macarena. Within moments, a number of passerby had gathered around the fight. Maybe they'd heard Hitomi shouting. Hey, what's going on? Oh my god, is that a knife? This ain't just some petty squabble. Someone call the police! Some of them began <laughs> taking photos with their cell phones. One of the men cursed in frustration, Good job. then signaled for his buddies to get back into the car. Achi couldn't stop them. The engine roared to life and the van sped away. Knowing he'd never catch them on foot, Achi merely let, watched it go because he's not Kano and didn't try to run after a fucking bike. <laughs> he could have jumped on the car. Yes. Yeah. He'd failed. This was his fault. All of it. Achi bit his lip hard. How could he possibly face Hitomi now? Achi... He told me his voice was hollow, empty. Achi stared down at his feet like a scolded child. I'm sorry. I... I didn't see whether your sister was in there or not. I see. The words, so simple and matter-of-fact, stung him to the heart. I'm so, so sorry. But he told me she simply shook her head. The fact that she wasn't even chewing him out made him feel all the worse. I know I messed mm -hmm. up, but I'll... He was going to say, I'll make, up, I'll make up for it somehow. But he froze with fear at what he saw next. He's back! Across the street, staring at no! them, was the man with the cane. He told me it's him! Fuck! They had to get out of here. He grabbed Hitomi by the hand and bolted down to Ogunzaka. The assassin followed, staying on his side of the road. Achi wasn't sure what to do. Should they try heading into the alleys and side streets again? No. It was more dangerous to head someplace where there would be fewer witnesses. Best to stick to Dogenzaka for now. The man wouldn't be able to gun them down if they managed to lose themselves in the crowd along Center Guy first. Besides, the guy had to use a cane. Aji and Hitomi could outrun him. In theory. 
Mm-hmm. Hand you in never hand, know. they spud along Dogenzaka and through the intersection in front of the 10-9 building. Come on, he told me, just a little further. Okay. She was panting, but she pressed on. Achi risked a glance over his shoulder. Huh? He stopped in surprise. What's wrong? He told me, asked. That guy. He's not following us. Isn't that Kano in the background? It is! <laughs> hey, it's hey. your boy. Yeah. The slope heading down to the intersection wasn't all that steep. In the intersection, several plainclothes detectives have been hiding amidst the crowd in the intersection as part of the kidnapping stakeout. Right now, Director Kuze is sending a message to all officers of the wireless, and so the detectives have stopped to listen in. It's a bit unusual, an observant individual might notice. Obviously, we are not an observant individual. Mm -hmm. It was no. strange that the gunman hadn't bothered to pursue. Still, there was no time to worry about his behavior right now. He told me, can you still run? Yes, I'm all right. Then this is our chance. This way. They needed to put plenty of distance be behind them before the assassin came after them again. But they also needed to find the van again and rescue Hitomi's sister. Would they be able to find it and yet stay hidden from the man with the cane? Aji wasn't sure one way or the other, but with Hitomi in tow, he hurried along where he hurried onward along Center Guy. And we hit the to be continued. Woo! Hey. Two down, three to go. Oh, hell yeah. <sighs> All right. Damn. Uh, I don't know if we made the right decision or not back there to, like, have her. Because, like, I wonder mm -hmm. if we had had Hitomi with us. If they would have run away, you know, or not. I mean, mm -hmm. Achi's still there, so, and they clearly Ooh. saw Hitomi. Yeah. I think it was the crowd that made them <laughs> run, and quite honestly, mm -hmm. any scene, like, they were going to come surround us anyways. Mm-hmm. So they would have probably definitely reacted at that if yeah. they were trying to, like, take Hitomi. Mm. So I think it might have been better that we didn't bring her along because there was a knife involved there and there was no guarantee that she was not going to be the one stabbed. Um, True. Good times. He tried to stab us. We know you how to You have a point there. Um, That's right. All right. We, we, we did good. It's we fine. We did good. Um, all right. So I think that we're going to end hmm. here for tonight. Um, we only have three left. Uh, we should be able to finish up this time block next stream um next stream are we wanting to do monday i should have asked you off a of stream um um or do we want to do tuesday uh we, it, yeah i think i should be able to do monday if it changes a lot <laughs> cool all right so we'll plan for monday for now yeah. um we are going to take over Lamer's stream spot. Um, we might not do... I think Thursday of next week is Christmas Eve. Um, we might take off some time for that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, that'll be a conversation for offline. Um, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so we'll be back on Monday to do this. Um, we'll be doing Tuesday next week. Um, and then hold for more information after that so um we will see you guys on monday have a good night have a good yeah. weekend um be safe wash your hands wear a mask don't catch covid um yeah we'll see you guys monday and don't kidnap people do not kidnap people yes. that is true <laughs> good night be good have a good night everyone <laughs> bye, bye.